Have you ever driven down the highway and thought to yourself, where did this name come from? How do you pronounce it? There's a lot of names out there across Historic Route 20 that just have a really unique name or a unique sounding name or the way it's pronunciated. So today, we're gonna travel across the state on Historic Route 20 and come up with how to say these names and where did they come from. We are gonna go east to west across the state, but since we're here in this town, we'll start with Skinny Atlas. Yes, a very unique name. It's actually a Native American name, meaning Long Lake. And there is a lake here in Skinny Atlas, New York. It's a beautiful town, one of my favorites on historic Route 20. Many people, when they first come to town, they're out of town, they see how the name is written out and phonetically they'll just maybe say Skinnatalies. That's, you hear that a lot around here. And, um, well, that's pretty far from it. So the way that locals print it out and in guides, they'll say Skinny Atlas. That's pretty close. But if you are a very local person here in the area, you'll actually know it's Skinny Atlas. So there's that A and E, eh, ske, ske, Skinny Atlas um, is the way most people would pronounce it if you lived here. Now we're back in the office after our favorite name on the road. Who doesn't like Skinny Atlas? Uh, it's a great place, great town name. And if you ever get a chance to go there, if you're not from the area, definitely check that town out on Historic Route 20. So now we're gonna go actually further east and travel east to west across New York State on Historic Route 20. And the first town we come to that is a little hard to pronounce, I think anyway, by looking at it is Skodak. Um, it's a small town east of Albany. It's not more, but less a suburb. And it is a Mohican word for Escatec. It was shortened over time um, by the English or even the Dutch, but it meant fireplace of the nation. We see that S-C-H-O sometimes when we think school or something like that, but here it is Skodak. The next town, uh, very fun. Um, I've been in this area uh, quite a bit. I've actually talked to a lot of locals to say, how do you pronunciate your name for the name of the town? Because I've heard three different variations and I'll give them to you all right here. Um, officially, when I've looked it up, it is Rensselaer. Um, that is what I have found on Wikipedia and other names to describe the family name of Killian van Rensselaer who owned property and land, a lot of land here in the 1630s, and actually had it divided up. And there was almost a feudal type system here in Eastern New York for many, many years. And a lot of this area was settled by the Dutch during this time frame. So a lot of the words come from the Dutch. So Rensselaer is officially the family name and how it is pronounced. But if you're in the town itself, sometimes people will say Rensselaer and that is accepted. Or I've even heard locals who've lived there for 50, 60 years, they've come up with Rensselaer, almost a Z on the S's there. And that is also appropriate or accepted in that area. So there's three ways you can say that you're from this area. If you say Rensselaer, you're probably going to be accepted pretty well here. But if you want to be more like a local, Rensselaer. Next, traveling across is Skoharie. It looks almost like it could be Skohari, and I've heard it that way, but officially it is Skoharie. And that's a Mohawk word meaning floating driftwood. And there is a creek, the Skoharie Creek, and I can understand where that word came from here. So it's the name of a county, the creek, there's a town, all in the area, this is west of Albany. We're about 120 miles west of Albany now, and we come across the town of Pompey. This is named after the Roman leader, Pompey, and a lot of people outside the area will say Pompeii, but if you actually, again, look at the Roman, it is Pompey. So there's the town of Pompey, there's Pompey Center, there's a little hamlet of Pompey, so there's a lot of little areas in this area called Pompey, and that's just southeast of Syracuse. Now, this is a fun one because this is where I actually grew up, so a little personal information there. It looks kind of obvious when you see it, and it looks like it should be Cayuga. And a lot of people will say Cayuga, but if you are a local in the area, it's Cayuga. Yeah, I don't know where the C-U-H came in, but a lot of people in the area will say Cayuga Lake. Cayuga means people of the Great Swamp. And just north of the lake itself 
is the Montezuma Swamplands uh, Wildlife Refuge now. So that is where that term came from. One of the interesting things now is that the name Cayuga Cayuga is a grape. It has been developed across the country as a very um, seasonal tolerant, disease tolerant, resistant grape. And a lot of places produce it. So when I go to travel across the country, sometimes you'll see the name of the grape. And most people will say Cayuga. And I just kind of like, well, I'm from the area and a lot of people say Cayuga. You just let it go with that. Further in the Finger Lakes region, another name as people see it, they're like, whoa, how do you say this? And if you actually look at it, it's pretty much as it looks. Uh, it's Canandaigua. That is a Seneca word meaning the chosen spot. And it is the name of a city, a town, and the lake itself there. So a beautiful area, and it is Canandaigua. One of our next towns is south of Rochester. This can get a lot of people a lot of times if you're not from the area. I learned this by watching local TV from Rochester as a kid and understood how to pronunciate these names. It is the town of Lima. Yes, it is Lima, not Lima. A lot of people traveling will say Lima, and you just politely nudge them and say Lima. Um, it's actually named after Lyme, Connecticut, so you can kind of see where you get that Lyme, Lima word from. The way we pronunciate Lima is actually called a shibboleth, and that is a term applied to any other words that we change the pronunciation of to make it a local flavor. Originally used probably as passwords uh, for protection in towns so that you would say that you're in a different area. Now I know a lot of places changed a lot of words during World War II, such as Berlin. And they didn't want to be associated with Berlin, Germany, so they were Berlin and changing the accent or uh, where you emphasize a certain vowel or a consonant. So there's a lot of those out there in Lima, New York, just happens to be a shibboleth. Another one that is kind of a shibboleth, but also um, it derives its name from the English and an English river is Avon, New York. And that's just next to Lima. So it's kind of interesting. We have two little towns right next to each other that have their names pronounced just a little bit different. So Avon is um, just south of Rochester also. And a lot of people will say Avon. To be a local, you're gonna say Avon. The last one on the list here is um, very interesting because I grew up saying it the way I think a lot of people would say, and we think of it as Darien, but actually it is named Darien. That is how the locals pronunciate their names. And I didn't even know this until about three or four years ago when I went to town and somebody said the name and I said, wow, that's how you actually say it. And they're like, yep, that's how it's said here. Because there is a famous amusement park in the town itself called Darien Lake. And the commercials, radio spots, everything say Darien Lake. And it is likely taken from the town in Connecticut as well. But that name was actually derived from the Isthmus of Darien, which is now known as the Isthmus of Panama or the Panama Canal. So I hope you enjoyed some of these unique little terms, um, names of towns across New York State on Historic Route 20. And the next time you travel, you'll learn how to say them a little bit better, or you can impress your friends, learn the list here and say, hey, we're in Skinny Atlas. We're entering Canandaigua now. Nope, this is Lima and Avon. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like, subscribe, and follow us on social media. And we'll see you in the next video on Historic Route 20. Take care, everybody.